Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is a beautiful Tuesday afternoon. It is Tuesday, May 1st, and we are at Field 13 for Hopkinton Hillers Softball, our first broadcast of the 2018 season. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call. Matt Clark is our cameraman as the Hopkinton Hillers come into today's matchup with a three and one record and they welcome in the Westwood Wolverines who are 0 and 4 on this season. Let's take a look at the Westwood lineup to start things off. Number 18, Margaret Fahey, the catcher, will bat first. Number 10, Alexandra Ponte, the third baseman, will bat second. Number four, Sydney Champagne, the pitcher, will bat third. Hitting cleanup, number six, Lauren Nelson, the right fielder. Number five, Kayla Poma, the second baseman, is going to bat fifth, batting sixth. The shortstop, number one, Lauren Casey. Seventh, Bridget Goss, who wears number 12 and plays first base. Batting eighth is Celia Mastromatti, who is a left fielder wearing number two. And rounding out the batting order for Westwood is Amy Lambert, the center fielder wearing number three. And now to bring you the Hopkinton Hillers defense, I welcome in my broadcast partner, Larry Sacklad. Nice to be here, Tom. I don't think I'll have to call you for any more weather reports this year. I think this is about our fifth rain out, or fifth makeup. But around the diamond, it's Katie Hawley pitching with Jill Cedia going to catch her today. Emma Murphy at third. Uh, Alyssa McIntyre at shortstop, one of my favorites. Jill Whalen is the captain, second base. Bella Onzi, first baseman. Jordan Chevry out and left. Megan Sullivan in center. And playing right, Kristen McCluskey. We would have had uh, Lily Morningstar out in center field, I'm sure, this year, but she went down to an ACL injury during basketball season. I'm ready to go. How about you, Tom? I'm ready to go. The Westwood Wolverines are led by head coach Tom Grandy. The Hopkinton Hillers led by second-year head coach Scott Soderberg, and we are ready to get started here at Hopkinton High School, the first game of the season on this diamond. As you all may know, weather has had a major impact on the schedule throughout the area. As Margaret Fahey, the catcher, steps in and awaits the pitch from Katie Hawley. And the first pitch of the game is in there for strike one. The Hillers have had a nice start to the season, three and one. They are just getting off an epic comeback win at Millis as this is hit in the air and caught by the shortstop for the first out. One away, and that'll bring up Alexandra Ponte, the third baseman. Katie Hawley is a captain this year, along with uh, Emma Murphy and Jill Whalen. Now it's a pop-up to uh, shortstop, and it's a ground ball to shortstop. Melissa McIntyre staying busy as she'll get the throw to first for the second out. A six to three ground out there for Ponte, and that's two away. And that'll bring up Sydney Champagne, the pitcher. Alyssa wearing her brother Brett, an outstanding outfielder from last year's varsity team. Holly deals just upstairs. And of course, we'll have a good mix of softball and baseball for you this season. Both teams off to great starts as this is on the ground. Back to Holly, throw to first, no problem. One, two, three, they go in the top half of the first. To the bottom of the first we go. You are tuned in to Hopkinton Hillers Girls Varsity Softball on HCAN. Set for the bottom of the first inning. Let's take a look at the Hopkinton Hillers lineup for today. Number 19, the second baseman, Emily Whalen, will lead things off. Number eight, the shortstop, Alyssa McIntyre, batting second. The pitcher, number five, Katie Holly, batting third. Emma Murphy, the third baseman, hitting cleanup. Jill Cedia, the catcher, batting fifth. Bella Ansi, the first baseman, batting sixth. Jordan Chevelle, the left fielder, batting seventh. Megan Sullivan, the center fielder, hitting eighth. And Kristen McCluskey, the right fielder, hitting ninth. And now with the Westwood defense, let's send it over to Larry Sacklot. Thank you, Tom. We have Alexandra Ponte playing third base. Lauren Casey playing short. Kayla Poma at second base. Guarding first base is Bridget Goss. Celia Mastromati out in left. Amy Lambert in center. 
and Karen Nelson in right field, Sydney Champagne toe on the rubber, and Margaret Fahey behind the plate. As Emily Whalen set to step in. She's off to a nice start this season, has also gotten some good work from the rubber. As the Hillers not really uh, having a pitcher this season, have shared time with a couple of different options, including, of course, Katie Holly and Emily Whalen. And a bunt attempt there, that one just upstairs. She hasn't changed her style. She's a, a bunt threat all the time. 1-0 count. Set the deal. And thought about the bunt once again there. That one up high. 2 and 0. Oh. She's probably the best girl on team in terms of running from the back of the batter's box to the front of the batter's box, which is hitting trick to top. 429 batting average for Whalen as that one is upstairs. She was hit 14 times this season. All of them counted for at bats. And that is going to be a strike, three and one. I don't want to get into our first argument of the year, Tom, but uh, I thought that was a little bit high. I'm a little bit of a homer, as you know. And there's ball four, she'll get first. So a walk to start things off for the Hillers offense. And now Alyssa McIntyre, a shortstop, will come up to the plate. She's in her sophomore season. And Emily's always a threat to steal. And she's going to take off right here. And that throw is going to be way too high. And Emily Whalen is credited with the stolen base. I'll take a dollar extra in my pay, Tom, for that prediction. All right. Certainly no surprise there. A 1-0 and count now on McIntyre. Whalen thinking about taking off again. That one's fouled away, and she's going to take off for a third. But she's going to have to turn right back around. Emily Whalen, a 429 on base percentage. And that is about the last person in this batting order you want on base if you're the opposing team. Is that pitch up high? Alyssa's played AAU ball, Hopkins in the Little League softball, caught a million fly balls and ground balls in her front yard with her dad that and one. her mom for that matter. That one upstairs, three and one. Emily Whalen thought about taking off again. She's now four for four on stolen base attempts. That one down low, and that is going to be another walk as Alyssa McIntyre heads the first. Second straight walk. And that'll bring up Katie Holly, the pitcher. Well, Sydney Champagne having a bit of a hard time to start off this game. Pitch up high, 1-0. and oh. Both girls are getting good secondary leads just in case the catcher bobbles the ball. They'll be off. How about this for Katie Hall? You talk about hot starts, 500 batting average. One and one count now, or excuse me, 2-0. and oh. She's picking up where she left off last year. That's seven for 14. Hit in the air, a high fly ball over to shallow left field. That's going to drop down, and both runners are going to have to advance, and they will successfully. Bases juiced for the Hillers. Now the outfielder didn't touch that ball, so you got to give her the hit on that. I'll give her a base hit, but she had that runner at second base. Yeah, and she uh, might have been trying for the force out there. I'm not sure, but... Wrong force. I think just underplayed it as Emma Murphy steps in the cleanup hitter, puts this one up the first base side, and that's caught. Double play there. Good heads up play there by the second baseman. And that is going to be a four unassisted double play. Whalen stays put at third. McIntyre over at second. You'll see it to the plate. Here's some power. She can hit the ball a long way. Her and Emma Murphy are about the only power hitters on the team. That was a saving play there by Caleb Palma. As this pitch gets by, an easy run for the Hillers. But wait, they're going to send her back. Hit by pitch. Oh, hit, hit by the pitch. Ah. So bases loaded once again. Well, despite the pitching struggles, Westwood only one out away from getting out of this inning unharmed. As Bella Ansi, the first baseman, steps in.
Champagne deals, that one is just up high. Everybody will be going on contact, his forces all around, so. Gallant, he had a 364 on the season. That pitch up high as well, 2-0. Four for 11 overall. Has an RBI and a double to her credit. There's a strike, two and one. Jordan Chevelle due up next, Shal Bella reach. There's ball three. One more ball, a Hiller's run will score. This Hiller's team is a very young team this year. One senior, I think, in Emma Murphy. And there is ball four. That is going to drive in a run for the Hillers. Emily Whalen comes around from third to score, and it's one to nothing Hopkinton. Alyssa McIntyre up to third. Josedia is up to second. That'll bring up Jordan Chevelle, the left fielder. That one is low, one and zero. Oh. Coach said they're going to have to play more small ball than wait for the three-run homer. There's a strike. Inside, two and one. I'll update you with scores from the uh, boys varsity team. as they come down to me from field two. That one inside, three and one now on Chevelle. Another potential run here for the Hillers if Chevelle able to draw the walk. Wonder what the leash is with Champagne. And that is fouled away down the third base side, full count. Runners will be off with the pitch. And that is going to be a walk to Jordan Chevery. Excuse me for the mispronunciation there. It was spelt wrong. And that'll drive in another Hiller's run as Alyssa McIntyre comes around to score. So now a 2-0 lead for Hopkinton as Megan Sullivan st steps in. Megan Sullivan, the center fielder today for Hopkinton as some discussion for Westwood, perhaps a new pitcher coming out. And that is indeed what they are going to do. So that'll be a quick exit for Sydney Champagne. And the new pitcher for Westwood is going to be Judd coming into the game. And her first name is Sydney. Sydney Judd coming into the game for. Westwood to take over the pitching duties and try to get out of this inning. Hillers two runs on the board, leading it two to nothing after a series of walks. And while the new pitcher gets ready, we'll take a quick timeout. You'll tune in to Hopkinton Hillers softball on H Camp. Megan Sullivan stepping back into the batter's box against the new pitcher, Sydney Judd. Second pitcher today for Westwood as the first pitch is down low. We got a score from up top, one nothing. Hopkins and Hillers over the Westwood varsity baseball game. That one sliced foul into the woods, one and one. Hillers baseball off to a great start as well. That should be a good battle we'll have for you on Friday as they take on first place Holliston. Two and one. Weather pending, I should say. Uh, and that's for any game in the spring. It's been murder. A two one down low. Three and one now to Sullivan. A walk will drive in another Hiller's run. It's Jill Cedia over at third. Jordan Chevry at second. Or excuse me, first. Belanci at second. That is going to be a walk and another run. Three nothing Hillers. Cedia comes around to score. 
Bases continue to be juiced. Kristen McCluskey, the right fielder, stepping in. That one down low. Nice block by the catcher. And that's been one of Westwood's issues is finding a consistent pitcher. That is sliced foul, one and one. Maybe they ought to find somebody that's not named Sydney. <laughs> Kristen McCluskey, a freshman for the Hillers. That one upstairs. The lone freshman from last year for the Hillers is Jill Cedia. Kluski off to a 300 start, three, three for 10 at the plate. That pitch up high, three and one. Judd deals and this is on the ground. Slow roller to the throw home and that'll be in time and that will wrap up the inning. The Hillers bat around and plate three. It is a three nothing Hopkinton lead as we head to the top of the second. Top half of the second inning, four, five, and six do up for Westwood. Lauren Nelson, Caleb Pullman, Lauren Casey. Katie Holly back out there for another inning of work for the Hillers. It's a three nothing Hopkinton lead. First pitch is ball one to Lauren Nelson, the cleanup hitter. Lineup and the pitch, that one inside. Two and oh. Holly set the deal upstairs. Some big shoes to fill with Katie Holly with last year's Heather Holly. Went on to play some college ball. Not sure where. Holly set the deal. There's a strike. Three and one. Lauren Nelson, Caleb Poem, and Lauren Casey do up for Westwood. Up the middle, and that gets by Holly. Picked up by the shortstop, throw to first, no problem. And that was a nice play there for out number one. That'll bring up Kayla Poma. Good throw across by Alyssa McIntyre. Poma hits this one in the air, a high fly ball over to left field, and ranging over to make the catch is Chevery for out number two. Quick outs for the Hillers. Jordan Chevery able to catch that one and that'll bring up Lauren Casey. Swinging strike, 0 and 1. That was about ankle high, Tom. I don't think she wanted to swing at that pitch. Holly deals, and this one is chopped up in the air to left center, ranging over to make the catch is the center fielder, Sullivan. And one, two, three, they go. Is Megan Sullivan able to get to that one in time? We'll head to the bottom of the second. It's a three nothing lead for the Hillers. It's Hopkinton Hiller softball on H camp. Bottom of the second inning, top of the order for the Hillers after they bat around in the first. Three runs scored on one hit. A series of walks by the starting pitcher, Sydney Champagne, and the reliever, Sydney Judd, still out there, had a couple. As this one is driven into right field, that's going to drop down for a hit. Throw to first, she's safe. Emily Whalen just beating that out. And that was a great throw in by the right fielder. Nelson, that was it. Real heady play. Almost had her, but Emily Whalen just too quick. And that'll bring up Alyssa McIntyre. As this is driven into left field, that'll drop down for a base hit. Whalen being waved a third. The throw over is just going to be dropped by the third baseman. And on the throw in, Alyssa McIntyre advances to second. Nice line drive by Alyssa. Nice piece of hitting. Hiller's starting to make contact now as Katie Holly, perhaps the most dangerous hitter in the lineup, steps in. Second and third, no outs. Already a 3 0 lead for Hopkinton. Judd deals. Infielder is playing in on the corners. 
all the way around. So Alyssa should be able to get a big lead out there at second base. Judd deals, and this is hit in the air, foul. 0-1, oh 1-1, one one. One one, excuse me. Oh, Emily Whalen and Alyssa McIntyre, both starting off the inning with a couple of singles. Lined up and the pitch, fouled away. One and two. Katie Holly in her junior year. Very young team, Tom. Certainly is. That one down low. And the good thing about a young team is you could develop a core and have them around for the next couple of seasons. Katie Holly has done a, this is her second uh, mound appearance today as she drives this one in the air to left center, and that's going to drop down for a hit. Whalen being waved around. Alyssa McIntyre is going to follow her, and just like that, it's 5 to nothing, Hillers. A two RBI double for Katie Holly. And that'll bring up Emma Murphy, the cleanup hitter. I believe Emma's going to Endicott College up in Beverly, last I heard from her mom and dad. She's four for 16 on the season. Takes ball one. One and oh. All the bats getting going in this inning for the Hillers. As this is hit in the air over to left field and that is going to be caught for the first out of the inning. One away. Jill Cedia will step in. Score from up top is 1-1. One, one. Hoppy in the versus Westwood. Boys varsity. That one in there for a strike to Cedia, 0-1. Cedia was hit by a pitcher last time up and ended up scoring a third Hiller's run of the inning. That one's low, one and one. Over at second base, that's Katie Holly, a great piece of hitting to drive in Emily Whalen and Alyssa McIntyre to make it five nothing Hopkinton. Judd set to deal, hit in the air, chopped up above the head of the second baseman. She dropped it, and that is going to allow Holly to go over to third, and it's going to be runners on the corners with one out for the Hillers. As Cedia reaches on the error. That was in sort of no man's land, Tom. And that'll bring up Bella Onsi to the plate. She walked her last time up. That also drove in a run. And Coach Soderberg out there to talk to the umpire. Perhaps a pinch runner coming in. We'll have to see. And it will indeed be a pinch runner for the Hopkinton Hillers. Coming in, it's going to be Heather Sivo to pinch run up for Jill Cedia. Line up and the pitch. That one is low to Bella Ansi. 1 0. Hillers might look to uh, delay steal. We have better double steal here. There's a strike, one and one, as Sivo takes off for second, and she'll have the easy stolen base. You know, Tom, with the infield playing in so shallow, she could have walked down there, or I could have walked down there. Judd deals, and this is hit in the air over to left center. That's going to drop in for a base hit. Katie Hawley around to score. Sivo is going to come around, and it's a 7 nothing lead for the Hopkinton Hillers. A two RBI hit for Bella Ansi. That center fielder out there, Amy Lambert, has become a ball magnet. Another great piece of hitting. As Chevery steps in and swings at strike one. And there's been questions, Larry, about the Hillers pitching, but certainly no questions about their hitting so far this season. 
Well, coach wanted to play base by base baseball or softball, excuse me. That one is low, one and one. Hillers as a team hitting a 305. Pretty impressive. And there's a strike, one and two. Trevery walked her last time up and that drove in a run. Four more runs in in the second inning for the Hillers, a seven nothing lead as that one is chopped foul. Judd's bringing up the ball a little bit. That ball looks really nice. It's up above the belt. And she thought about swinging there, but held up. Good eye by Chevery, two and two. Sophomore waits the pitch and hits this one into the air, and that'll drop in for a base hit. Another Hiller's run being waved around, and she will score easily as Chevrolet slides safely into second. It's an 8-0 lead for Hopkinton. Bella Ansi comes around on the base hit by Chevrolet. And that'll bring up Megan Sullivan, the center fielder. Good piece of hitting there by Chevery. That breaking pitch is in there for a strike. I haven't seen any of the Westfield, uh, Westwood uh, fielders, the outfielders at least, hitting any cutoff. It's hit up in the air out of play. They're Going throwing to. directly to the bag. That was Jordan Chevery's third RBI of the season on that last hit. Two count to Sullivan. That one is low. One and two. Corners are in. Hit in the air. Foul left side. Judd deals, that one is low, two and two. Still only one out in the inning. Judd delivers, and this is chopped up in the air above the head of the second baseman, and she will make the catch. Two away. Chevrolet stays put at second base as Kristen McCluskey, the right fielder, will step in. Hillers have batted around for the second time this afternoon. 1 0 count to McCluskey. There's a strike, 1 and 1. McCluskey grounded out her last time up to end the first inning. It's this one up in the air, above the head of the second baseman. That'll drop down for a hit. Runner being waved around to home. The throw in is going to be in time. So they will get Chevry trying to score, but not before the Hillers put up five more runs. And it is an eight nothing lead as we head to the third inning. You are tuned in to Hopkinton Hillers, Girls Varsity Softball on HCAN. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad, and Matt Clark on camera. Happy to bring you Hopkinton Hillers softball on HCAM as we enter the top half of the third inning, an eight nothing lead for Hopkinton. Hillers three and one on the season, Westwood 0 and four. Heading into today's action as Bridget Goss, the first baseman steps in. And there is strike one from Katie Holly who is wheeling and dealing today. She's getting herself into a nice groove. By the way, Tom, did you bring the uh, sunscreen? That is filed away, I did not. Which might not be a good thing, but I guess we shall see. I don't see a cloud in the skies. I could use a little color. Uh, yes, I agree. Swinging strike, out number one. She's got nice velocity. 
on her fastball, Miss Hawley. That was the first strikeout of the day for Hawley. There's strike one there to Celia Mastromatti, the left fielder. Holly deals, just high. And this is up the third base side, picked up and throw to first, not a problem. Nice play by Emma Murphy. She's the Brooks Robinson of the TVO. Five to three for the second out. Amy Lambert to the plate. There's strike one. I think we're looking at the one-two punch for next year with Katie Hawley and Jill Whalen, who's playing second base right now. Up the third base side once again. The throw over, not a problem. Murphy gets it done again. One, two, three, they go for the third straight time. We will head to the bottom of the third inning. It's Hopkinton 8, Westwood nothing. You are tuned in to Hiller's Varsity Softball on HCAM. Bottom of the third inning, and for the third time today, we see the top of the Hillers batting order because they have just continued to rally. Three runs in the first, five more in the second. Emily Whalen to the plate for her third time today. Sydney Judd still out there for Westwood. As that bunt is held up, ball one. I was mentioning during the break that that right fielder Nelson has made two tremendous defensive plays, and I don't know why she's not in center field. This is hit in the air, above the reach of the shortstop. That'll drop in for a base, uh, base hit. Whalen is aboard for her third time today. Look for her to go. I'll bring up Alyssa McIntyre, the shortstop. Alyssa one for one and a walk. Two runs scored. And she is taking off, but that one is fouled down the third base side. She'll turn right back around, 0-1. Alyssa's a good contact hitter. So Whalen's in no jeopardy to get doubled off. So waits the pitch. Whalen taking off once again. The throw up to second is going to be too high. Another stolen base for Emily Whalen. She just has serious speed. Speed kills, they say. That's her fifth stolen base of the season. And that is hit foul just above the head of Coach Soderberg. Good thing he was able to duck out of the way of that one. That was tattooed down the line. One and two. Third baseman playing very close in. Maybe Whalen might think of swiping third. And this is right to the third baseman. The throw over to first, not a problem. Whalen will advance the third. So a five to three for McIntyre, but Whalen does push up the third, one away. Katie Holly to the plate. That one down low, 1-0. Oh. Are we allowed to make bets on uh, H cam, Tom? Uh, not legally. <laughs> <laughs> I say that uh, Jill Whalen comes in. And this is hit out of play. 1-1. One one. It's Emily Whalen. Oh, Emily <laughs> Whalen. I'm sorry. Jill's her sister. <laughs> 1-1 one, one pitch to Katie Holly. That's a sliced foul into the backstop, one and two. Kenny Holly having a nice day at the plate, two for two, single and a double. That was a two RBI double in the second inning, which scored Whalen and McIntyre. Even though Westwood is playing in, 
to try and cut a run off at the plate. With Emily Whalen's speed, I don't think they're going to have much success. The 2 2 pitch to Holly. Down low, full count. What Katie may do on a, on a walk is just trot down to first base and continue on the second. Judd delivers. Upstairs, ball four. Katie Holly will head over to first base. That is the first walk given up by Sydney Judd since she's come in. Actually, no, that's not true. She had a couple walks at the end of the first inning. That'll bring up Emma Murphy. And that pitch down low, that allows Katie Holly to take off. Would you call that uh, defensive indifference, Tom, or you give her a straight steal? I would call that taking off on a wild pitch. I don't know if that's a steal. Or actually, I believe it was the catcher who dropped it like she did there. So if you got to give her a steal then. Yeah, I'll give her a steal. Why not? Very generous scorekeepers here at H Camp. 1 0 count to Murphy. That one inside. 2 0. Oh, the scoreboard uh, had me there. She actually drew the walk. I got distracted for a second. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Bases loaded for the Hillers. Jill Cedia to the plate. Judd set the deal. There's a strike, 0-1. Oh that oh, was a little high, Tom, a little high. Two walks in the inning from Judd as well as the single by Emily Whalen. Have loaded up the bases once again for the Hillers as this one's tattooed up the middle. That'll drop in for a hit. Emily Whalen around the score. Following her is Katie Holly. Maybe a third run here. Here comes Emma Murphy. The throw in, not in time. And it's a three RBI base hit from Jill Cedia. 11 to nothing, Hopkinton. That's what you want out of your four hitter. A nice gapper. Everybody coming around to score there. Empty and off the bases. And that'll bring up Bella Otzi with one out, one on, three in. I don't want to say anything at this point in the game, but um, is there a certain rule in effect here? Not yet. As this is hit up in the air to center field and caught two away. That would take place after the top of the fifth. And I believe it is 10 runs or more. So if Westwood can't grab any runs, we could certainly see a shortened game here. As Jordan Chevery steps in. There's a strike, 0-1. Right up and the pitch. That one inside, one and one. What's the pinch running rule, Tom? Only do it one time per game? As they pinch ran for, excuse me, pinch run. Pinch ran for Cedia earlier. This is up the middle, and that is going to be grabbed by the shortstop, throw over, no problem. Six to three, four, the third out, and I believe they could do it um, a few times. We'll have to get the exact amount on that. But that is going to wrap up the third inning. And after three innings of play, it's Hopkinton 11, Westwood nothing. To the fourth we go. It's Hopkinton Hillers, varsity softball on H Camp. Top of the fourth inning, an 11 nothing lead for the Hillers over Westwood. As Margaret Fahey steps into the batter's box for her second time today to face Katie Holly. That one is upstairs, 1 0. Katie Holly has pitched three very good innings so far for Hopkinton. As this is hit in the air over to center field, and that'll drop in for a base hit. So there goes the no-hitter. A single for Fahey, and that'll bring up Alexandra Ponte. I told you not to talk about the no-hitter in between innings, didn't I? I didn't mention it at all. Somebody over there did. And... Uh, 
umpire going to head over to the Westwood coach. I think we're going to have a pinch runner here for Westwood. And we indeed will. Coming in to pinch run for the Westwood Wolverines is going to be Kayla Riley. As Alexandra Ponte steps back in. And she'll lay down the bunt, picked up by the catcher, throw to first, not in time. Nicely done by Ponte. Bunt right up the line and is able to beat it out. And Westwood looking to have something brewing here in this fourth. I thought Joe Cedia might have let that one roll. I'll bring up Sydney Judd. There's a strike. Both runners thought about taking off. Back to the bag they go. But being down 11 runs, I don't think they're going to take many chances on the base pass. I think the Hillers have played flawless defense today. Am I right? Yeah, they certainly have. It's been very impressive. Flawless offense, too, really. 0-2 oh on Judd. Katie Holly deals. All on slice foul. Count remains 0-2. She went chasing after that pitch. It was out of the zone, clearly. Holly delivers. And this is hit up in the air, no problem, by Cedia. And she makes the catch, one away. Certainly a reliable catcher. And bring up Lauren Nelson, the right fielder. Swing strike. Nice speed there by Holly. Holly deals up the third base side. And an easy out over at the third base bag. The throw across, and that's a double play. How about that? The Hillers defense showing off once again as Emma Murphy gets the force out at third, throws it over to first. No problem, a 5-3 to three double play. And we will head to the bottom of the fourth. Hopkinton leading Westwood 11 to nothing. It's Hopkinton Hillers varsity softball on HCAM. Bottom of the fourth inning, the Hillers leading Westwood 11 to nothing. Tom Nappy and Larry Sacklad on the call. Matt Clark on camera. And we have a pinch hitter coming up for the Hopkinton Hillers. Madeline Holden will step in and pinch hit for Megan Sullivan. And Larry, we saw Coach Soderberg talking to his players before the game, and he told everyone to be ready because he wants to get all of them in there. So I, I expect uh, we'll see a good amount of mixing and matching over the next few weeks with this team. They just really have to. With all the rain we had, I've never experienced a worse spring. A lot of games being compressed into a small amount of time. They certainly are, as that one's fouled off 0-1. It's Madeline Holden's eighth plate appearance. The junior is two for seven so far on the season. Takes ball one there. The boys varsity are playing their first game on field two up there. The BAA uh, broke some sprinklers and the irrigation system with the tent they put up after their rehab, voluntary, volunteer rehab over the winter. One, two, and that is strike three. Some nasty movement on that pitch, one away. Sydney Judd still out there, trying to work through her struggles. And it looks like we have another hitter here stepping in. This is Heather Sivo. She came in a pinch run at one point in this game. So Heather Sivo going to step in for Kristen McCluskey. 
I believe her brother Dante is graduating this year, class of 2018. Still 1-1 up there at bottom of the fourth inning. Westwood Wolverines Baseball Club versus the Hiller Baseball Club. Sivo waits the pitch. And there's a strike. Judd deals. Swing strike 0-2. Swung right over the top of that pitch. Line up and the pitch. That one upstairs, one and two. The Hiller girls are not as vocal as they were last year. Maybe it's just due to their youth. That's fouled away. Well, you know, still early in the season. I'm sure they'll get louder as the season goes on, especially if they keep putting W's in the book. Are they top dogs in the TVL right now? Uh, we'll get to standings in just a moment, actually. That's a good idea. There's ball two. They'll see Nolan Ryan uh, next game with Norton. Oh, yes. This is hit in the air, first base side, and it'll land in foul territory. Count remains two and two. Let's take a look at the TVL softball standings. Medway's four and one. Ashland four and four. Medfield five and two. Norton. At the top with a six and one record, Hopkinton three and one as that one's fouled away. Bellingham four and three, Holliston four and four, Dover Sherborne two and six, Westwood oh and four, Millis one and six, and Dedham five and four. Judd deals, that one is inside and low. Of course with Kelly Nelson back, you gotta expect Norton to make another big run. Judd deals, and this one's sliced up in the air, foul just behind us. Count remains full. So if you're not doing anything tomorrow, which is Wednesday, come down and watch this young lady throw. I believe the softball game's on the road, and the baseball game is at home. Get in your car, go down to Norton, and watch her throw. Judd is sent to deal. And there is strike three. She gets Siva looking two away. That will bring up Emily Whalen for her fourth time today. Four innings, four at bats for Emily Whalen. She is two for two with a walk, three runs scored, a couple stolen bases. Pretty good day. The bunt is going to be held up 1 0. Emily Whalen was hitting a 429 coming into this game. That average certainly has gone up. That one down low, one and one. Her on base percentage was in the 400s as well. Probably getting close to the 500s now. As this is chopped up the middle, that'll drop in for a base hit. And she is now three for three on the day. That's what the college coaches want to see. Run up through the batter's box, connect, and put it somewhere in a line. That brings up Alyssa McIntyre. Whelan going to turn back to first as that pitch briefly got away, but a nice stop by the catcher. I'm not sure where they want to rub it in, being up 11 nothing. There's a strike. Emily just taking a few hard steps towards second base, not not going. Margaret Fahey's done a nice job behind the plate for Westwood. As this is up the third base side, that's gonna get by the reach of the third baseman, and that'll be a base hit for Alyssa McIntyre. Emily Whalen up to second. Two on, two outs, Katie Holly coming up. Coach was telling me earlier in the, before the, uh, game started he's really impressed with Alyssa's hitting and fielding although I thought she should have made the team last year as a freshman swinging strike oh and one she might have been fighting for some playing time and her father was just as happy she stayed down playing freshman ball right 
Sometimes that's the best case scenario. One and one. Katie Holly two for two today and a walk. Two RBIs to her credit as well. And she has pitched a terrific ball game. That pitch down low, two and one. Emma Murphy's sister Lulu should be moving up from freshman next year. A heck of a ball player. She had deals, that one's fouled away. Two and two. Judd set to deliver. That one upstairs, full count. Just happened to see our roving photographer, John Copley. Hit in the air and out of play. Full count. Katie Hawley, a 500 coming into this game, seven for 14. Already four RBIs heading into this game. She now has six to her credit. That one upstairs, and that is going to be a walk. Base is loaded, two outs. Stepping in is Emma Murphy, the third baseman, who has made a couple of terrific defensive plays. As they were, there will be a infield meeting in the pitcher's circle for Westwood. 11-0 lead for the Hopkinton Hillers. The Hillers have scored in every inning so far, except for this fourth inning. Three in the first, five in the second, three in the third. Bases loaded, two outs. A cleanup hitter at the plate. A pitch up high, 1-0. and oh. Emma Murphy, 0 for 2 today, did walk in the third and scored a run. Gets a piece of this one up the third base side, picked up, and she'll make the easy play over at the third base back for the force out. And we will head to the top half of the fifth, the Hopkinton Hillers leading the Westwood Wolverines 11 to nothing. It's Hillers varsity softball on HCAN. Top half of the fifth inning. Due up for Westwood is the second baseman, Caleb Poma, Lauren Casey the shortstop, and Bridget Goss the first baseman. That one is inside, ball one. And we do have a pinch hitter at the play right now for the Westwood Wolverines. That's a sliced foul, 0-2. Katie's thrown a one hitter so far, right, Tom? I believe so. Yes, a one hitter, yep. Swing strike there. Megan Swindon at the plate for Westwood. And there's a strike, and she's gonna try to take off for first base, not in time, out number one. Score that two to three, Tom. Two to three strikeout. Correct. I'll bring up Lauren Casey, the shortstop. And there's gonna be another pinch hitter here for Westwood. They're unloading the bench. Yep, getting everyone in there, why not? And this is Megan Brown stepping in. Must be tough for a coach when your team's getting absolutely smoked. Well, it's never fun. 0 and 1. But it's a good opportunity to get uh, some of the less experienced players in there, give them a shot. This is up the third base side, picked up the throw to first, no problem. Emma Murphy just makes it look easy. A five to three out, four out number two. And that is going to bring up a pinch hitter for Bridget Goss. It's gonna be Lauren Griffin stepping in. The umpire just making note of the pinch hitter. Boy still locked up in a 1-1 battle at the bottom of the fourth. Well, Larry, a uh, good start for the Hillers. After they close out this game, they'll be 4-1 on the season. 
Can't ask for much better than that, especially with this young team. I would have thought they struggled, but they've proved me wrong. Line up and the pitch, there's a strike. You can't doubt Coach Sotoberg, come on now. Well, that's true. <laughs> Holly deals, that one low. Terrific pitching performance today by Katie Hawley, and she's someone I expect to see out in the pitcher circle a whole lot more. As that is nearly caught up the third base side, but just out of the reach of Murphy, one and two. That was a very defensive swing by the Westwood hitter. But Katie's got to feel pretty confident with all the leather she's got behind her. This is Katie Hawley's third appearance on the mound. She only threw seven innings coming into this game, and gave up five hits and two runs. And only one of those runs was earned, so not too bad. And those stats certainly gonna look a whole lot better after this terrific performance. One-two pitch to Lauren Griffin. And is hit up in the air and handled by Jill Cedia behind the plate. And that is out number three. Welcome back to Hopkinton High School field 13 as we continue on to the bottom of the fifth. Coming up for the Hillers is going to be the catcher, Jill Cedia, five, six, and seven due up. Jill Cedia, Bella Ansi, and Jordan Chevery to face Sydney Judd who is out there for another inning of work. Cedia steps in to face Judd. Pitch up high, 1-0. and oh. An 11 run lead for the Hillers. Judd deals. That one sliced foul, 1-1. One one. Young Cedia last definitely does not get cheated up there at the plate. She goes up there hacking. Judd delivers, there's a strike, one and two. She gets a pitch belt high, she might uh, lose that ball. That pitch down low, two and two. Well, Larry, I believe the mercy rule might actually be 12 runs. We'll have to get the uh, official rule on it. Pitch inside, full count now on Cedia. Well, if that's true, I'm not sure why they did some pinch hitting last, last inning. I'm not the coach here. <laughs> Line up and the pitch. And that is going to be a walk for Jill Cedia. I'll bring up Bella Ansi. The first baseman, Jill Cedia having a pretty good day at the plate. She has reached three times. Well, actually, she reached on an, she reached four times. She reached on an error as well. Hit by pitch, an error and a walk, and also a double. That was the hardest hit of the game. And we do have a pinch hitter for Bella Ansi. It's Tara Kester coming in. So Tara Kester going to pinch hit for Ansi. I believe she's got a brother that's up on the varsity baseball team, third baseman. Tara Kester, a freshman. 273 on the season, 3 4 11 overall. That one down low. 1 and 0. Oh. Judd deals. Third base side foul. One and one on Tara Kester. Yeah. 
Judd set to deal. There's a ball, two and one. So before next game, we'll have to get the rules on the pinch runners. One upstairs, throw down to first. CD back safely. Three and one on Kester. Swinging strike. Well, one of the confusing things is a lot of those rules go league by league during the season. Judd delivers. That one's fouled away. Top of the sixth inning up at the boys game, one to one. Wow, well, pitcher's duel looks like over at the boys game. Yeah, it looks like it is. Full count pitch, and that is strike three. Kester goes down looking, one away. And bring up Jordan Chevery, left fielder. There's a ball, 1-0. Kester delivers. That one's low, 2-0. Oh. I don't think they're waiting for a walk. They're going to swing or not. 3-0 count to Jordan Chevery. That one inside, there's ball four. Two walks in the inning for Judd. Now we'll bring up Megan Sullivan. Or Megan Sullivan's due up. We'll see if she comes up this time. And she will. Center fielder will step in. Two on, one out for the Hillers. There's a strike, 0 and 1. Oh, maybe the mercy rule is after five full. That would make sense. It could be. And this one picked up at third, the throw over. And that is going to be in time for the out. So, Megan Sullivan reaches on the force out. That takes Jill Cedia off the base paths, moves Chevery up to second. Not sure why the third baseman didn't just reach her rear leg out, touch the bag, instead flipped it to the shortstop. Heather Sivo steps in. And this one's right up the middle, and that is gloved by the pitcher. Judd makes the catch for the final out of the inning. And I believe we're going to play on here. We will head to the top half of the sixth. It's Hopkinton 11, Westwood nothing. You are tuned in to Hiller Softball on HCAM. Top half of the sixth inning. Westwood coming back up, trailing by 11. And we'll have some more. Pinch hitters, it looks like, for the Westwood Wolverines. They're going to get everybody an opportunity in this one. Stepping in is Kayla Lisi. She is a senior. She will bat for Mastro Maddie, the center fielder. Katie Hawley out there for another inning. As this is hit in the air, caught by the shortstop. One pitch, one out. And now Amy Lambert due up next for... Westwood, but she is going to be pinch hit for as well. And this is going to be Kayla Riley. Alyssa McIntyre made that play look easy. Certainly did. There's a ball. 1 0. He's set to deal. There's a bunt up the third base line. The throw over, not a problem. 
Another great play by Emma Murphy, five to three for the second out. We'll bring up Margaret Fahey. That pitch up high, one and oh. Up the third base side, picked up the throw over, not a problem, a quick one, two, three. Top half of the six, to the bottom of the six we go. The Hillers leading Westwood 11 to nothing. It's Hopkinton Hillers varsity softball on H camp. Bottom of the sixth inning, top of the order for the Hopkinton Hillers. Emily Whalen, Alyssa McIntyre, Katie Holly do up. To face Sydney Judd, who has been out there since coming in late in the first inning. That one down low, 1 0. Emily Whalen has reached base. Every time she is batted today. Is this her fifth trip to the plate? It is. Three for three and a walk. As there's a strike, one and one. Emily Whalen trying to bunt her way on. That pitch upstairs. She's always been good since she's been a young girl with the stick and very solid with the glove. That one down low, three and one. Set to deal, and there's a walk. Emily Whalen has reached for her fifth time today. That on base percentage it's going to skyrocket because of this game. Pad the stats game. That's right. Here's Alyssa McIntyre. She gets a piece of it up the third base side. That's going to get through. Whalen going to stop at second. It is a no out single for Alyssa McIntyre. We'll bring up Katie Holly, the pitcher. Alyssa just might be a better hitter than her older brother, Brett. Ali awaits the pitch. That one down low, gets by the catcher. Both runners are going to advance. Emily Whalen up to third, Alyssa McIntyre up to second. On the wild pitch there. What are you giving that, a pass ball or a wild pitch, Larry? That's a wild pitch. That's what I think. But at this point, Ball two to Holly. Well, maybe a designed walk here to Katie Holly, who has had a pretty good day at the plate. And she crushes this in a left field. That'll drop in for a hit. Emily Whalen around to score. And it's a 12 0 Hillers lead. And that is going to do it. The Hopkinton Hillers mercy. The Westwood Wolverines on an RBI double by Katie Holly, which scores Emily Whalen. And they take home the 12 nothing victory over Westwood. A pretty impressive offensive performance by the Hillers, Larry. No question about that. And the defense was incredible as well. Really, really impressed me. Well, for the Hopkinton Hillers, they were able to scrape together 12 hits. And of course, 12 runs, committed no errors. Katie Holly pitched a terrific game and a lot of great performances with the bat, including Emily Whalen, Katie Holly, Melissa McIntyre, all having terrific days. And also, uh, Emma Murphy had a nice hit as well in a couple of great defensive plays. And as for the Westwood Wolverines, they came up with two hits today and scored no runs. Westwood falls to 0-5 on the season. The Hopkinton Hillers are now 4-1 and overall. For Matt Clark on camera, my broadcast partner, Larry Sacklad, I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for listening.
and watching Hopkinton Hillers Varsity Softball on HCAM. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day. We'll talk to you again soon, everybody. On Tuesday, May 1st, Hopkinton Hillers Softball took on Westwood in their home opener. The Hillers put up three runs in the first inning. And there is ball four. That is going to drive in a run for the Hillers. Emily Whalen comes around from third to score, and it's one to nothing Hopkinton. And that is going to be a walk to Jordan Chevery. Excuse me for the mispronunciation there. It was spelled wrong. And that'll drive in another Hiller's run as Alyssa McIntyre comes around to score. Jordan Chevery at second, or excuse me, first, Belanci at second. That is going to be a walk and another run. Three nothing Hillers. Hopkinton added five more in the second inning. Jeff deals. And this is hit in the air over to left center. That's going to drop in for a base hit. Katie Hawley around to score. Sivo is going to come around. And it's a 7-0 lead for the Hopkinton Hillers. A two RBI hit for Bella Ansi. And three more in the third inning. Loaded up the bases once again for the Hillers. As this one's tattooed up the middle, that'll drop in for a hit. Emily Whalen around the score. Following her is Katie Holly. It may be a third run here. Here comes Emma Murphy to throw in, not in time. And it's a three RBI base hit from Jill Cedia. 11 to nothing, Hopkinton. The Hillers girls would get the Mercy win with another run in the bottom of the sixth. Hopkinton takes down Westwood 12 to nothing and improves to four and one on the season. Westwood falls to 0 and five overall. Katie Holly was great from the pitcher circle, giving up no runs, two hits, and striking out a pair. Hillers baseball took care of business against Westwood in their home opener. Hopkinton won the game two to one. Brendan Kelly pitched a solid five innings, giving up two runs and one hit. Andrew Sirocco pitched two clean innings to close out the game and grab the W. Hillers won the game via a walk-off in the bottom of the seventh. Tommy Ambersoni got the winning hit and RBI. The Hillers followed up with a second straight home walk-off win Wednesday, May 2nd. After trailing 4-1 heading to the bottom of the seventh, the Hillers rallied and played it a walk-off run in the bottom of the ninth to take the 5-4 victory over Norton and improve to five wins and three losses on the season. A big thank you to Richard Sosicki for the excellent pictures.